my favorite subject these days because it leads to so many interesting things that are going on with Psyche uh, as a thought form, as a field of consciousness. Uh, you can think of it that way. It's not just a series of techniques. To me, Psyche has never been just a series of techniques because the power of Psyche isn't in the techniques. It's really in each of us. And the gift of Psyche is giving people tools to access that power that's already in themselves. People talk about the power within, but not too many people talk about, well, how do you get in touch with that power? You just willpower it. You know, you just will it to be so. You use affirmations, willpower, positive thinking, all that stuff we've been taught for the last 50 or 60 years, for sure me, because I entered, I think, the self-help world about the time it entered this, this uh, dimension and uh, been around a while. And it's like it's going on its 30th year, 30th year of being of service to people on this planet who want to be better people, better expressions of the divine in physical form. So to me, that is something that I'll celebrate for sure the whole year, because it's to me, it's kind of a miracle. Uh, when Psyche was given to me initially in 1988, uh, in December, as a matter of fact, of 1988, the first patterns that uh, most of the listeners are familiar with, uh, most of the facilitators for sure, like the core belief balance, that's an advanced uh, process, uh, process taught in the advanced workshop, actually. I'll put it that way. It's a better way to think about it. Uh, it's, it it's a very more or less complicated pattern compared to what you learn in the basic Psyche workshop. Both of those patterns, the new direction balance and resolution balance, are wonderfully effective and useful and very sort of laser-like in their ability to pinpoint areas of your life where you'd really like to have some improvement, where you're running on old programs, the ones that you got from your parents and you got from your early experiences in childhood that are no longer serving either who you are now or who you are becoming. And that who you are becoming part, that's really key because right now, if you haven't noticed, um, check your pulse, that things are changing at a very high rate of speed and transformation. The internet, the very thing we're using right now, is partly responsible for that because information can be shared as we're doing in this moment all over the world instantaneously. That was never the case before. The very highest technology might have preceded the internet, but when the internet came online, when we have this ability to communicate with each other at this level and share ideas, it changes the nature of our existence. It changes the nature of our consciousness and the way we process information and how much information we have to process just to stay up uh, to speed with what's going on in the world, which seems an overwhelming task most days, for me specifically. <laughs> so I monitor what I let into my world. So I pick carefully what's important to me, what's worth wanting and paying attention to because otherwise you're, you're drowned in a tsunami of details and opinions and perspectives from all over the place. Some of it valuable, some of it distorted, some of it uh, real. So to, to bring this full circle, the, the principles of nature became uh, part of that download transmission process that started 30 years ago. Uh, and it was in, 19, or it was in uh, 2011 when uh, these, uh, this information was first showing up in my head in a familiar way, the way Psyche showed up many years ago. And I was uh, pretty astounded by that. And so I wrote these principles down. And because uh, I'm a dear friend of Bruce Lipton's and he of uh, me, and we've worked together for it was about 14 years all over the world doing four-day workshops that included two days of, of the science of uh, genetics, epigenetics, really, and he sort of put that on the map. Signals above the genes actually cause the expression of the genetic uh, po potential that we all have. And so that experience with him and the fact that he talked about in the earliest of days when I first met him and we started working together, his core message was, you know what, we've really messed things up on this planet. Why? Because we're not paying attention to the wisdom of Mother Nature. Mother Nature is the best uh, life coach you could ever have. She's got millions and millions of years of experience in running a, an incredibly complex planet uh, with all of these species interactions that go on, including us as a species on the planet. And 
we're not paying attention. We're, we're, we've gotten to the place where we think we know better than nature. And so if you start looking at what we're doing to the planet, you get a very clear idea that we're way above our wisdom level uh, to try to make the planet, um, uh, to help it, to support it. In other words, we live on this planet. This is our home. And we're systematically destroying that home uh, as a function of uh, turning everything into a commodity, something that can be bought and sold. That is going to be the, our undoing. And Bruce will talk about this sixth mass, ex, mass extinction of humanity is basically a function of us expediting that, speeding it up, and creating it. We can stop that. We can turn that around. But, but that battle is not going to be won, in my opinion, at the level of politics. Politics will be an outcome of the change in consciousness that we all need to make, R literally to rise above the, the problem, the level of thinking that created the problem. Einstein coined that phrase that you can't solve a problem from the level of thinking that created it. And that's so true. So we have a lot of very wizard-like intelligence on this planet creating things that they don't have the wisdom to control. And there are many examples. I won't go into them here because we don't have that much time. But uh, some of them are just obvious. You know, we're messing with nature. We're messing with the economy. We're messing with the ecology. We're messing with our lives in ways that are not functional, and we can't see far enough down the road to see the effects of what we're doing. So the way you can see further down the road, the way you can see the big picture and how a detail affects that big picture is by raising your own consciousness. And I firmly believe and know in my heart that these principles are a stepping stone. It's a way to move up in your perspective and perception of reality such that truly um, not just variations on the theme but true solutions to the problems we've created are available and can be implemented but we have to implement them with a level of wisdom not just talent to create this or that effect but the wisdom to know what's worth creating and mm -hmm. as far as I can tell in my world anyway my experience with these principles are that when you internalize these via psyche because it's a really good way to download wisdom into your subconscious mind and bring it up to speed so that it can reflect through its automatic thoughts and, and the behavior it drives solutions to what we're doing here on this planet and each one of these 11 principles reflects one of those things that if you start to think about it you realize that these are actually fundamental um, I would call them instructions on how to live in harmony and peace and balance on this planet. And the sooner we get about doing that, the sooner we can, in effect, ride the, the change in the direction it's going, but also direct that change to a more hospitable ending uh, change mm -hmm. process. It, it can either be like a plane crash or a safe landing, and I choose safe landing. <laughs> so, but that's going to happen because we all have to be able to imagine that safe landing and be the safe landing, each of us individually. And because we're all interconnected, as the quantum physicists call it, quantum entanglement, as the spiritual people call it, the law of one, there is really no disconnect. I don't care how far away you are from me physically, geographically right now, we are all interconnected. Our thoughts impact each other, not consciously because most of us aren't aware of that. But all of those thoughts are in the field of consciousness, and we all live in that field. So I think the real gift of the principles of nature um, is the wisdom embodied in these principles. And once we internalize them, our, our life will change because our perception changes. Because that's really what life is. It comes down to it. Your life, and therefore your emotions and your choices of behaviors and all kinds of choices in life are a function of how you perceive reality. The core questions, you know, that philosophers have been asking themselves for centuries, who are we? Why are we here? What are we here to do? Where are we going? Those kinds of big questions, not what are you going to eat for dinner and can you get a better job and how about a better mate and, you know, all of those sort of nitty-gritty three-dimensional things. Those are important because we live in this three-dimensional matrix. But the most important questions are the larger questions. Who am I? Why am I? <laughs> what's my point here what's the point of being on the planet in a physical body because the truth is we're spiritual beings first and foremost having a physical experience and if you can live from that reality not just as a as a, a quote 
from Rob, in this case it was uh, Chardin, the famous French philosopher, who said we are spiritual beings having a human experience, not the other way around. And I think he was spot on. That's exactly what we are. But we've forgotten that we're spiritual beings and certainly forgotten how spiritual beings would be with each other if we could remember that, re-internalize it, know it as, a, as sure as you know we're having this conversation right now, or you've got your computer or your phone in front of you. We consider that all to be reality. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't real. And that's a very important thing. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are real, and you can't see them. What you see is the effect. So I'm saying that these 11 principles, and I ran them by Bruce because we were working together and, uh, at that time, and I, I said, you know, you're the biologist. Um, is there anything missing in here? I, I, I received these a few days ago in a, a whole download, and uh, if we're missing something, please let me know. And he read each one of those and thought deeply about them, and he said, couldn't think of another another aspect of the wisdom of nature that he would add to this or take away from it. He said, every one of these uh, ideas is present in nature, and you can see it biologically. So the, re the reason we're, Bruce and I are repartnering up, we haven't worked together since 2011-ish, and uh, we really enjoy being able to do what we do together because it's a perfect fit. He gives you the science of how things are and how they could be different, and I give you a way to make them different because the difference we want outside of us has to start inside of us, and that's where downloading the wisdom of the master, in this case it's the master called nature, and she knows what she's doing. This is really part of a larger movement, a larger construct, a larger awakening to the divine, the divine feminine. Uh, nature is our mother. Literally, we are children of nature. And if you, if you want to spell nature, G-O-D, well, you're welcome to do that because the divine presence is a function of you see nature. That's the part of God or whatever name you have for that creator of all that is. Uh, it makes it present and real. And the beautiful thing is the solutions to all our problems are right in front of us. You just need a little decoding uh, and putting together of the details. So we see trees and we see streams and we see the sky and we see rocks and animals and all of that. And those are all individual aspects of nature. The beauty and, and magic and wisdom of nature is the part that connects all of that. It's how nature operates. It's how all these elements of nature interact with each other, how they're interconnected, and what the system is. It's one giant ecosystem, divine ecosystem. And we, the species that has the biggest prefrontal cortex, but I think is sometimes our worst enemy and not our best friend, <laughs> needs to re-enter this harmony and this balance and read the original instruction book that nature gave us about how to live in harmony and and peace on this planet, then, I mean, you'll have so much more joy, satisfaction, and happiness in your life because harmony is what makes it so. So we need to, we are spiritual beings. We need to start acting like them. And I'm just saying, if you don't have programs to do that, this is a very effective way of downloading a baseline set of guideposts, guidelines for how to live on the planet with each other and with uh, the planet itself. So... In, in all this idea of the principles of nature and what we've been happily doing with them in the, since August 2011 that you uh, transmitted this information to us, we've been getting comments of how these have been evolving. Yes. How, how's that working? How's that happening? It's a real interesting concept. That was maybe, I'm trying to remember about when this occurred to me and when it was given to me. Uh, maybe it was a year ago or something like that when, it, when the first streams of this awareness came in about these particular uh, principles and their corresponding goal statements. And that is that there's something different about these than the other categories of change that have been a part of Psyche for all of its 30 years of, of history. Uh, personal power and, and uh, relationships and prosperity and grief and loss and, and all that stuff. There are seven of those uh, categories. Or th I think that's true. <laughs> I think there are seven of them. Anyway, they're all really the nitty-gritty of three-dimensional life. And what's different about these principles and the goal statements in the nature 
part of uh, it, this is, is that they have an interesting mystical quality about them that, like I said, I, I receive information. So it's not that I sit down and think things up so much. Sometimes I can put things together all right, and that's why we have Psyche. But I'm not the author of these ideas. I'm the receiver of them. And the reception system was wide open, and um, the broadcast was made, so to speak. And what I was told was that these patterns inside, these, these words that are on this page, are the intention of them is evolving. That is to say, along with the Earth. The Earth is doing an evolutionary leap of mon monumental proportions. Uh, it hasn't done this for 26,000 years. It's a very long cycle. And it's coming to an end, and a new cycle is beginning. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of an old cycle and the beginning of a new one. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. So we look at our world and say, all right, we, we see how bad it can get. We see what walking away from the spiritual essence of who we are expressed through nature can get us to where, to where things are right now. People are waking up every day because things have gotten so bad. They can no longer ignore them and just go about their lives and do their little jobs and come home and you know, do their thing. Uh, you have to get involved at some level. And involved doesn't necessarily mean you're on a street uh, with a placard uh, saying what you stand for. That's, that's important too. But I'm saying the more you work with yourself to adjust your consciousness to these changes that are going on and be, have the changes be user-friendly for you, not things you resist, but something that you, it's like, you know, I grew up in Southern California and as a kid, I used to go to the beach all the time. And I used to love body surfing, being in the waves and waves are so incredibly powerful. And, you know, at that age, when I was 15, 16 years old, I thought I was powerful too. All 15 or 16 years old, <laughs> you know, I can do anything. The ocean taught me humility. It taught me timing. It taught me a lot of these principles, actually, cause and effect, you know, interconnectedness, et cetera, et cetera. Because body surfing is a particular sport that requires timing and awareness. And it requires you to submit yourself to the power of the ocean, not fight it. Because I found out as I fought it for many uh, summers, the waves and all of that, I was, I was so strong and all. No, 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 that was, that was crazy. But I learned the lesson that if I fight the waves, I will lose because the waves will keep coming and I will wear out and the waves won't. And secondly, if I was just in the right place at the right time to catch a wave, the wave didn't crash me into the sand and I'm spinning over and gobbling uh, seawater. It, it would be beautiful. It would give me a beautiful effortless ride all the way into the beach from far out in the ocean. And it was about timing. If I didn't catch the wave just at the right time, either I missed it entirely and I'm still out there and the wave is breaking, or I was too much in front of the wave and the wave would break on me. Well, when that happened, then I was tumbling in the water, couldn't tell which end was up or down, and I'm gasping for air and all of that. So too soon or too late, this is a timing issue, <laughs> is not a good thing. So having your timing be impeccable, having your timing be okay, now it's time to do this. And it doesn't mean just riding a wave, obviously, but life is like that. It's a wave of its own. And when you're in the right place at the right time, you know what to say because it comes to you because you're in that space, because it's flowing. It's not an effort. It's not a battle. And wouldn't we like life to be like that? Well, the fact is it can be like that. But that's part of the aspect of these 11 principles. One of them is timing and divine timing at that. So for you to be aware of timing then puts you in that place in the wave. In this case, think of it as a huge wave, a 26,000 year wave that's built up and is now moving in the direction that is literally unstoppable. So your, your issue is, are you gonna drown in that change or are you gonna thrive in the change and take the ride in the direction it's going? That to me is um, a really important and just one aspect of the power of these um, goal statements within the principles of nature. And, and they're evolving in and of themselves. Here's the cool part. They're linked to, these statements have a vibration uh, because they're a thought. They are linked to the actual evolution of the planet. So as the planet continues to speed up its own evolution, because it's going there whether we go with it as a species or not, Bruce will make that crystal clear to you uh, because we're going to be working together again in July of this year in uh, Taos, New Mexico. We decided uh, a, reun a reunion party is in it. <laughs> is in order, so that's what we're up to.
it's going to be a wonderful event. It's all, going to be all about nature. And Bruce will be, a whole, be doing a whole concentrated day of the science of nature and where that wisdom shows up in nature. And I will be teaching a three-day basic workshop with a definite focus on these principles and the mystical qualities of what's going on inside these principles. That's what excites me. So even if you've already taken a basic psyche workshop, you might find this one particularly interesting because I'm, I'm here to tell you that you could go back with those principles now, probably for many of you that have taken them and actually balanced for them if you did that in the basic. And you may find that some of them are weak again. They were strong when you left the class, but they're not. Typically, in the other categories of change, which I, I, I will characterize as largely three-dimensional, except for the spirituality one, but even that's three-dimensional in its own way. These principles are in the evolutionary stages, and as they evolve, they will give you another chance to experience change at whatever level you uh, bring to this possibility. In other words, it's about you. It's not about the words on the page. It's like entering a, an ancient mystery school. You get out of the mystery school what it is you take to the mystery school. So if you already have done a lot of personal work, a lot of spiritual work, then when the opportunity presents itself to make a change, you will start where you are and go to the next level. And if that level is an entry level place, then you will go to the next level. If it's an advanced level place, you'll go to the next level. And it, these principles are kind of like that. They, are, they will take you, they're little waves in, in, in their own right, they will take you wherever you are capable of going at that time. And with these, I would say, you ought to check them every 30 days. If you've already internalized them, go back and just muscle test them. It doesn't take long to do that. Find out if any, any of them are now weak where they were strong a month ago. And then rebalance for them. Because the balance won't be to get them back to where you were. It will to take you. It will be to take you to the next level that this vehicle, these vehicles, all 11 of them, can, can facilitate within you. Very exciting times and a very much a change in the frequency and the evolution of Psyche itself. The thought form is evolving along with the planet, along with human consciousness. That's what excites me these days. Yeah, that's it really is amazing because it, personally I find what you say, how this has evolved and how when I received these from you in August 2011, I probably of the 33 had maybe 18 or 19 week because and personally, I find my life say, practically did this you know in 24 hours and then out of curiosity and reports from some other facilitators that are retesting them and finding new evolution on their lives thanks to this so it's really exciting to see how psyche is actually um designed for each individual. It's like a, I don't know, tailor-made process. It's always been that. It, I, I used to call it designer beliefs because uh, you can fashion them to, to fit exactly where you are. It's like it's not a template that you have to fit into. It's a, an amorphous field of consciousness, or Bruce might call it a stem cell consciousness. You know, it hasn't been assigned a task yet. So... The potential is there, and the tools and processes themselves, the balances, are there to be actualizing, to actualize whatever it is that you choose. You know, it's important to remember that in Psyche, like, hey, we don't choose what you should believe. We help you believe what you choose. So that's why it's, it's, not, a, um, it's not aligned with a specific religious belief. It embraces all of the world's religions and non-religion for that matter. The question is, what do you, it's like learning to drive a car or fly an airplane, I guess. It's a transportation device. The, the question about where you want to go, and, you know, is up to you. Now, the only caveat with that is, and it's a good one in my opinion, which is the reason that I, I actually um, stayed the course with Psyche for so many years after studying so many other modalities was the permission protocols, the spiritual component of this, your higher self actually is the one that makes the determination as to whether or not a goal is worthy of you internalizing it or not. If it's not safe and appropriate for you to internalize something, even though you think it's a really good idea, and most of your good ideas, no offense, are actually programmed into you from society, things that you should want because the promise is they'll make you happy, 
Happiness is a state of mind. It's not about what you have or your bank account or how many places you've been or how much power you have or how many people respect you or any of that. It's do you respect yourself? Do you understand who you are? Do you understand that you're here for a purpose and you're here to contribute to your life and the life of other people? And it doesn't matter what that contribution is so much. Just make some contribution. And that can be a, a, just being a heck of a good parent or a really good world leader or somebody that really cleans restrooms really well or picks up your trash or makes the trash or does environmental um, deeds that um, are helping to save the planet. So it doesn't really matter what the task is. The task is less important than your intention and your expectation and your sense of value in contributing to humankind and to the planet. We're not just humans here. We're just extensions of the planet like every other creature on it. So find something, some way you can be of service, some way you can be kind, some way you can help other people. And if you do that, the rewards of that will be extraordinary. Uh, truly, that's been my experience. I was psyche. I left the corporate world. It was a very lucrative job. And I was in telecommunications uh, and the television business, uh, cable television specifically. And it was just unsatisfying to the max spiritually. And for my path on the planet in this incarnation with Rob, he had to leave that environment. And he jumped off the, the financially sound cliff into the midair and just said, okay, I'll do, I'll do what I feel I know I need to do, find a way to make a contribution. I thought it was through counseling and it sort of was. I, I went to graduate school while I was in the corporate arena got a master's degree in counseling and then decided to leave the corporation and make a living being a professional counselor. And I did long enough to stay in the game until Psyche was given to me because mostly the counseling techniques and approaches and stuff that I taught was taught at the university were not satisfying. They didn't meet uh, my business criteria was results oriented. Therapy was mostly process oriented. So I had these two conflicts when I left the corporate world. This seemed like this just takes forever. And, and yet, the, the results only aspect was there was no heart and soul in it. There's no passion in it. It was just, mm -hmm. here's your goal, get the job done, and we won't fire you. You know, so it, it was a very much of a conflict. And it was a good conflict because then I had to find a way to resolve it. And that's when Psyche was given to me as a results-oriented, highly spiritual, uh, high-touch and high-tech blend, like blending the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. It's a great metaphor for science and, and uh, spirituality. And that's what's happening on the planet is those two things have, are coming back together. Their, their disconnect years ago, many thousands of years ago, as it goes with the Incan prophecy of the eagle and the condor, uh, the left and right hemisphere, the masculine, feminine principle, science and spirit, whatever you want to call it, broke apart and have been flying separately for a long time. And I believe, as the Incan prophecy says, that we are at that stage in this cycle that we're coming back together. So in Psyche, the masculine and the feminine have equal value. And they both understand that they're even more valuable when they fly together, when they're integrated. So that integrated state of consciousness is an elevated state spiritually. And so you can think of Psyche, I certainly do, as a spiritual process with psychological and physical benefits. But first and foremost, it's a spiritual process. And it's designed as the, the greatest gift we can give is to awaken people to their own divine connection. That is to say they are spiritual beings having a human experience and then giving them the capacity to create the software to live that in everyday reality, in three-dimensional reality. Then truly we can have heaven on earth. Yes. yes. Um, um, I think it's mine and probably all my other instructors, friends in this community that one of the big blessings is this ability that we can offer through Psyche to really create this interconnectedness in, in the sentence of whether I am extremely Catholic or if I'm extremely Muslim or whatever I believe as a religion, uh, we are here to include everybody in what really spirituality is, not this abstract concept like I used to have in all my collection of previous um, <laughs> paths that I walked with. And 
A beautiful example of that was this past weekend in Guadalajara in Mexico, and we had a very, very strong Catholic person who was very scared at the beginning because his wife took him there by the hair. <laughs> and to see him moved the last day to tears to recognize his yeah. spiritual being, to recognize that he can be a better version through himself and that we were not trying to push him anywhere and that he could lead his own life. It was really transformative. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing, and that's the reason that I, I wanted to teach again. I haven't taught for quite a, quite a number of years, and the agreement between myself and all of the instructors, and you know this, is that I'm not interested in being out there and in any way competing with my own instructors for, uh, for workshops. You know, I, I, it's crazy. But once in a while, I need to teach. <laughs> my, my heart, my soul demands it. And Bruce is, uh, I've known Bruce for 25 years, and we, are, we have a mutual admiration society, and we know when we work together, we create what the physicists call a constructive interference pattern. In other words, <laughs> Bruce plus Rob equals more than Bruce or Rob. And when we put the wisdom together with the ability to internalize it, and that's what this four-day uh, event will be in Taos, New Mexico, and it's what Bruce and I did for so many years around the world, we love doing it. it. It feeds our souls. It lifts our spirits. It creates this this joy of being able to be of service uh, with what we know and our backgrounds and our skills uh, to make a contribution that we know makes a better world, and we get to live in it. So it's kind of enlightened self-interest, you know. The more uh, we can help people make a better world, the better world we live in as well. Oh, that's beautiful. And I think that the other beautiful thing is that we get to have fun with it because all the other things that I did before were everything was so serious right. because we were spiritual. And, <laughs> and I, you know, we end up believing that and buying into that. And we can just go out there and make it fun and easy and make life fun and easy. Right. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, for allowing this into the world, for being so brave as to sticking with it and bringing, inviting all 40 of us who are taking this out to the world with you. And we're so looking forward for July to be there with you, Bruce, and, and all the people who are already signing up for this event. I talked with Anton last night, and he said that only in 24 hours of launching the event, we already have almost 20 people signing yeah, up. Yeah, and we can only handle 100. We have a room that cannot cannot put more people in the, into that room and have it function properly. So we're going to cut it off at 100 people. And so in, in 24 hours, we have you know 20 people. It's not going to take very long. But it's yeah. one of those things where, you know, it, it, and it's a test too. It's because neither I nor Bruce really um, know for sure how this is going to work, if people are really interested, if they're even ready for what we're doing. Because really, this is kind of a, a, a bridge to this idea that has been haunting me for quite some time is I've read more and more about ancient mystery schools in Egypt and other parts of the world and what their purpose was on the earth. I, I see these correlations I can't ignore between the ancient mystery schools and Psyche. Psyche to me is really, if you start reading up on these ancient mystery schools, they Psyche is like a modern-day ancient mystery school. The processes are different, but the intention and the, cap the capacity to facilitate people awakening to their own divinity is extraordinary. It's an accelerated way to do what they did in those days with priests and priestesses in the ancient mystery schools. And here, the priest and priestess is your own consciousness. In other words, masculine and feminine is with you. And it turns out by giving people some tools and a, an environment with the beauty and, and mastery and mystery and ability of psyche instructors, as they evolve, they are becoming the modern day priests and priestesses of this modern day. That's where we're going to go in this, this four day event is to introduce people to the fact that you know, we are really, I used to say Psyche, when people ask me, what is Psyche? I said, well, it's kind of uh, cutting a edge ancient wisdom. <laughs> and I didn't realize how true that was until I started to study 
more about what's been done in the past to aid people in the spiritual awakening process. And some people call it a, a living resurrection. You essentially die to the old beliefs you've carried around as your identity, and you are installing, moving towards a whole new set of beliefs that are worthy of who you are and who you're becoming. And I think that's the biggest gift and the most exciting thing that's going on right now. I am so blessed and so delighted to be a part of it. I can't tell you. I mean, it's, it's, where, it's my path, and so it's where I am. And fortunately, I don't have to do something else you know, to make a living. I can make a reasonable living to making a difference. And I, that, that, to me, is a hugely um, uh, beneficial fact of life, and it makes life, for me, like you said, so much more fun, that I can do something I love and still make a living doing it. Yeah, and, and I think that the, the other word there that you used was that we choose to do what we love. Yes. It's not something that we have to do. It's not something that it's been put upon us and that we are tired to do every day. It's just something that we're just so excited to share with people yeah. and to stand out there. People ask me, why do you come to workshops every single weekend to share the same thing? Well, because it's never the same. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's never the same for an individual, and actually it's never in, never the same for an instructor. People get confused and think that psyche is what's on those papers. The papers are, the papers are a jumping off point, uh, and that's why uh, what we're doing here, and I'm teaching essentially a three-day basic psyche workshop with the focus of uh, Mother Nature. As a matter of fact, on the um, uh, the what would you call a promotional piece, I guess, that we just put on the website 24 hours ago or 48 hours maybe now. And it says, uh, join uh, Rob Williams, originator of Psyche and Bruce Lipton, cell biologist, special guest, Mother Nature, because <laughs> she will be ever so present at this four-day event here in a very mystical place. Uh, Taos, New Mexico has quite the reputation for being, as they say about New Mexico, the land of enchantment. And they're not kidding. So the Sangre de Cristo Mountains are here. We're holding it at a hotel called El Monte Sagrado. So we have the Sacred Mountain, uh, the building itself that will be in. It's a beautiful place and worthy of this gathering and the people that will come. So I really appreciate uh, getting a chance to share some of this information with you. And if, for those of you that have already taken the basic uh, workshop and have these principles, I, I would recommend, just as an experiment, Take them out. Take another look at these 11 principles. And there are three uh, goal statements per principle. Just muscle test them again. See what happens. If something is weak, see it as an opportunity. It's your own higher self saying, oh, we have another upgrade for you. you know, yeah. don't get operating software once, as you know, on these computers. And this is the, uh, the, the ultimate operating system is between your ears here. The energy <laughs> field that is the mind. And... We pay no uh, attention to that mostly. I mean, if you come to a psyche class, you are therefore upgrading your operating system. But most people don't really do that. They don't think of it. They wouldn't think of running their pro their um, uh, computers on old software, but they sure don't seem to mind running their minds on old software until it hurts, until there's enough pain, until there's enough discomfort, and then people start asking questions. And those are the ones that come to the psyche Workshops, uh, by and large, uh, they're not people that are just entering the self-help world. They're people that usually have done quite a lot of work personally and haven't really found something that's fully satisfying yet, something that has that can be tailored to their needs rather than having a program and you sort of have to fit into the program. Psyche just isn't like that. It never has been. And that's what keeps it interesting for me. I've been doing it longer than anybody on the planet. And the fact is, every balance that I do... Uh, is always uh, different in some way, shape, or form, and insights come while I'm doing the balances, and changes, of course, come, just like for all of you who have had experiences with Psyche. So there's no place where it ends. I, I can't find, it's like pushing an envelope, but the envelope keeps moving. If I, The more I push it, the more it moves, the more it expands, the more room I have to grow myself. And I would recommend that to Anyone, find something. Even if it's not Psyche, just find something that continues to grow you and right. do that. That's the main thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have a beautiful path, and it's just open to whoever feels drawn to it. And I, I think that's the other beautiful thing about it is that our marketing is quite different from any other marketing I ever did. It's just 
we're just there. We're visible. If you like what you see, then come see us. <laughs> well, it's more an educational institution than uh, even a self-help uh, modality, in my opinion. Our job is to educate people about the subconscious mind and conscious mind and superconscious mind, and then give them tools to let them access themselves, essentially, in ways that can transform them. And then they choose the path. The, the psyche path is very broad. It's not narrow and deep. It's very broad, and it allows people from various belief systems, religions, etc., to be on that path together in harmony because they get to control their part of the path. So it's not about you have to believe what I say. Uh, we're just educating people, giving you the facts about how things actually are in the world and how that we are our spiritual beings having a human experience, that perception controls and develops and creates the very world we live in. So yes, you can change the world by changing yourself. And when you realize that, that whole, I call it the plague of powerlessness, the idea that you can't make a difference because you're only one person, no, that becomes a excuse not to make a difference because you are not just one person. You are a fractal of the whole. You are part of, an essential part. I, I would call it um, a thought in the mind of God. So you are a part of that divine expression, that intelligence that creates all that is. Nobody is. There used to be a saying I, I remember years ago in the 60s. It was, God don't make no junk. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I think, uh, it, it, you know, it's... it's um, uh, un-Englishy, good English, that is, uh, it still drives the point home. It's very profound and very powerful. You're here for a reason. Find your reason. Uh, know who you are first and foremost. It's like the when I wrote the Psyche book back in 2000 and something, uh, I, I was looking for a dedication. You know, as authors do, they always dedicate it to their kids or to some other person, personage or whatever, whoever inspired them. And I thought when I started thinking about it and I couldn't come up with anything, one time in a moment of, when my brain stopped going so fast, uh, the words came in, may you recognize your divinity, discover your greatness, and become the peace you seek. And I thought, I, it blew me away. I looked at it and said, yeah, and exactly that order. <laughs> because if you can recognize that you're a divine being having a human experience, then you are greatness, that which you are here to give to others and express, because it's you and only you can express that, What's the grand prize? A sense of peace, being in your own skin, at peace with the world, at peace with yourself. doesn't mean you don't have causes in there. It's not injustice and you don't want to right the wrongs. It means you can be at peace inside yourself while you're doing that. So recognize your divinity, discover your greatness, and become the peace you seek. And that is my message to everyone listening and everyone I get a chance to talk to because I think that if you do that however you choose to do it, then this world that looks so difficult right now, uh, the problems in the world will evaporate completely because you can't have those same problems from the level of consciousness that I'm talking about. Well, I think we're uh, running out of time here and we don't want to take too much time of your beautiful day in Taos, New Mexico. And we really, really hope to see you soon and join the fun and the love fest with Bruce. We're looking forward to it, and certainly everybody's invited that, uh, for whom it feels uh, right to be there. And I want to thank everybody, especially you, Marta, for putting this event on and uh, this, this one happening right now. <laughs> it's an event. Uh, and giving me a voice, uh, a way to speak to so many people that uh, are on their path. And I bless each one of you and say, stay on it. It's the most worthwhile thing you'll ever do. The rest of it are a bunch of details. <laughs> and they will affect those details in positive ways if you can see who you are and operate from that sacred space. Well, thank you, Rob. And thank you, everybody who has joined us. We joined us today. We've had over probably 35, 50 people from all over the place. And that's also the fun of this, is to see the true interconnectedness of this brings into our lives love you very much have a lot of a beautiful day and we'll see you soon again thank you very much thank all of you okay